Where should I be looking for the typed chat? Or yes. Should I not be bothering? Oh. No, you're good. Uh, hey, everybody. Chris, you can be checking out uh, the twitch.com uh, forward slash W O G D live. You'll have to open up up in a browser and you'll you'll see okay. the live chat. Okay. Cool. Let me... Hello, Gert. Might want, Hello, Jenny. Might want to mute that though, because that'll. Be yes, I know. You, I, I know. I, I do live streaming. You have to mute it, otherwise. <laughs> That'd be uh, weird. Uh, all right, let me go get my tablet for that. I say that only because I always forget. <laughs> awesome, awesome. This is going to be a good chat, folks. Glad you can make it. <clears throat> So, uh, if you are joining us, we're letting Chris grab his tablet here real quick. So we'll give a couple minutes. We'll get let a, meet people have a couple minutes to hop on as well. Um, while you're hopping on, let me give you a rundown of what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, first and foremost, we're going to be chatting with Chris and Joe from Goodman Games. Uh, that will probably last thirty to forty minutes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, Joe can be dead weight sometimes and kind of draw things out. But <laughs> this is wow. true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sad but true. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll we'll try to power through and and give you a quality episode regardless. Um, <clears throat> Heartless. That's right. And then uh, after that, we'll uh, we'll have a little intermission, and then we'll come back for a, a live recording uh, with John. Troy and myself uh, at our regularly scheduled broadcast time. Where John will be the dead weight. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exchange one. See, I yeah. I thought it was just here to make uh, Zach look better. Well, there can be, yeah, there can be two reasons. You can Lowering be dead weight. Lowering the bar as much there as possible. Can be <laughs> yeah. That's my job. <laughs> That's what I do. That's right. What uh, was that Twitch um, address again? Yeah, let me just, let, I'll pop it into host chat for you there. Awesome. No problem. So, right. Let's see. Troy, do you mind actually dropping in that into uh, yeah, I do that. Perfect. Thanks. Awesome. Actually, I found it actually. Oh, you did it. Awesome. With the wrong thing. No problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, we'll fix all this in post. Uh, we'll fix it in post. That's right. There's only so much you can fix in post. There you go. Oh, hey, look, there's Chris. Awesome. <laughs> Wait, can't you fix everything in post? <laughs> Nearly. Uh, that's, that's how you it can works. certainly try. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Well, Chris, Joe, thank you so much for popping on. Uh, Really appreciate it. We're excited to have you. Um, if you guys are ready, we're going to go ahead and start the official recording of the podcast. Let's do it. All right. Here we go in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Geeks Cant, the home of RPG goodness and general tomfoolery. My name is Zach and the host joining me this evening is the mayor of Fort Wayne, Troy Sandlin. Greetings one and all. Awesome. Perfect. Good job. And then uh, we also have Chris Doyle and Joe Rasso from Goodman Games. Hey, everybody. Howdy. <clears throat> we are super excited to have you. Uh, Joe, you reached out to me, um, I think, with Chris in tow last week and uh, said, hey, we've got a project live on Kickstarter. Do you want to have us on? Um, and that was super exciting. We... We love Goodman Games, and we love Kickstarter, so yeah, absolutely. And then your Kickstarter's been doing gangbusters since then, so... Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it's extra special treat. Chris, you said before we went live that uh, this is the best Kickstarter Goodman Games has had to date, is that right? That is correct. We have done 35 Kickstarters, and this is our highest funded Kickstarter. We still have three weeks to go. 
Um, you know, we were cautiously optimistic that this one was gonna was gonna do really great um, because it's an awesome product that's got that's steeped in in role playing game history. Um, but you know, I was talking to you guys earlier. It's like you just don't know until you you go live and you hit that button. You you, you do everything. You, you get everything. The weeks and weeks of planning go up to it, and then you go live, and then you keep your fingers crossed that the people come, and and they came, and are still coming. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think one of the things that drew me in right out the gate, and we're kind of jumping ahead of ourselves here, but that's fine, whatever. Um, one of the things that kind of drew me in right from the gate is uh, Goodman Games is always, like, their Kickstarters always stand out, They're pretty much always successful. They uh, You have some really cool properties that you get to play around with. But this one has that killer art, especially that cover that you've got for the um, the Chosen Sons of Set. Yes presentation is just incredible and it's one of those books that i think when you see on kickstarter and later when you see on the retail shelf you're going to just have to pull off and look at because it's it's unlike most other things that you would see out there right now yeah agreed and and it's a it's a three book in a slipcase set so it's massive um, which is what we kind of specialize in doing making these big huge projects if you guys are familiar with uh um, or number six, uh, Temple of Elemental Evil and our treatment in that. This one's probably not going to be as thick and heavy, but, um, but it's three books instead of two. So, and, uh, and, and all the other goodies we're going to pack in there too. So it's exciting. That's awesome. Well, so we, we jumped ahead a little bit. I want to walk back though. Um, we have a wide eclectic audience here at, uh, at Geeks Cant, uh, a lot of our audience is going to be familiar with Goodman Games products and probably somewhat with you, Chris. But uh, for those of you who are not and are listening, Chris, can you give our listeners an idea of who is Chris Doyle and what is Goodman Games? All right. Um, well, uh, I'll start with myself. So uh, my name is Chris Doyle. I am the uh, director of uh, 5e development at Goodman Games. So this is my full time job. Awesome. Um, I joined Goodman Games uh, almost two years ago now um, to basically head up what I like to call the 5e side of the house. Um, Goodman Games has their own uh, role playing game system, the DCC uh, role playing game system. So somebody else actually manages that side of the house. Um, uh, so we basically, we, we tag team and, um, and a lot of our party, we do have some crossover, like for example, Dark Tower, where we're actually doing versions of both. So we do work uh, very closely together. But uh, um, I myself, I've been freelancing since the early 90s. I've been playing tabletop role playing games since the early 80s. Um, and um, I've been specifically freelancing with Goodman Games since 2004. So, um, and, and I'm the lucky guy who got to work on most of the uh, OAR uh, we call it the or books the original adventure is reincarnated numbers one through six um i did number one number two number four and i was the project lead for number six because it was so damn big we needed a a team <laughs> to work on it uh so i've had the the honor really and the and hmm. the pleasure to to actually contribute to the legacy of of dungeons and dragons between uh keep on the borderlands uh in search of the unknown the lost city isle of dread and um and Temple of Elemental Evil doing official uh, Wizards of the Coast licensed um, conversions, 5e conversions for those to bring them to a whole new generation of gamer. And, and that's, I'll be honest with you, that's the best part of my job is, I mean, I, my son right now is the gamer. Uh -huh. um, he just finished his freshman year in college. So he's not a little guy anymore, <laughs> but it, it's fascinating to be able to share these classic 70s and 80s adventures that we played when we were kids and now families are playing with them. We've run into so many people where they're like, I'm running my family through, you know, keep on the borderlands. And it's like that, that's, that's the best part of it. it. It really is. So that's cool. That is way cool. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. It's very cool. I thought we miss being at in-person conventions. I'll actually be at origins in two weeks. It's yeah. the first in-person convention that I've been at in over two years. It's the best part is hearing the stories and hearing how everybody handled things through these classic modules and they they all remember them and they know them and it's just, it's amazing to be there and somebody will walk up and say i know that book i remember that book and then the next thing you know they're opening up their wallet and throwing money at you because they're like i have to have this <laughs> so it's great it's great that's awesome 
and then Goodman Games, like you kind of touched on it, but Goodman Games does these conversions, but then it also has its own DCC system, and it has a lot of stuff that it plays in that field with as well. Yes. So our DCC uh, role-playing game created by uh, Joseph Goodman himself, It's uh, this is the 10th, uh, 10th year anniversary um, of the role-playing game, and it is steeped in Appendix N lore. So if you guys remember the first edition, Dungeon Master's Guide Appendix N was the inspirational readings that Gygax used to create uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So that's what his book is really, really tied into. That. So it's a, it's very much a first edition feel to it, mm. with a little bit of third edition mechanics kind of thrown in there as well. Um, and and we've got some exciting licenses that we've worked on with that, including um, Lankmar and Dying Earth. And mm -hmm. you never know when other ones are going to come around. Um, so we've got to do, and we also have um, a Mutant Crawl Classics, which yeah. is kind of like our our Gamma World kind of um, version. So uh, kind of mixes that. So it's a it's a it, it's definitely um, a, a little bit of uh, chocolate and peanut butter getting mixed in it. There's a little bit of sci-fi <laughs> influences in there as well. It's not like traditional um, Tolkien-esque kind yeah. of uh, 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 you know gaming like 5e is. So and and that's probably why you know the 5e side of the house and the DCC side of the house they kind of don't they kind of don't get in each other's ways. There's really kind of two different um, you know fan bases for that. So and and the DCC fan base they are a passionate bunch of oh my folks. Gosh. Let me tell you so. Yeah, we were at, you were probably going to say that, Troy. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I saw you take a breath at the same time. I was going to say, um, Troy and I uh, kind of spearheaded uh, a bunch of uh, oh, games yeah. that we ran at GaryCon, and we ran uh, a section of DCC stuff, and man, it just sold out instantly, and people went nuts nope. for it. So yeah, there's definitely a huge fan base there. Awesome. Uh, the other guest that we have this evening uh, is returning guest. Uh, I don't know why, but uh... Can I get a jacket. <laughs> uh, Can I get a jacket. Uh, jacket for. It's like no, you, you haven't beat uh, you haven't beat Andrew yet. Oh, damn. Okay. That's true. Yeah, uh, but Joe Rasso, I appreciate you hopping in. Joe is a friend of the show. I think we can say that safely. Uh, but Joe, you also got to contribute to this project, and so um, I thought it'd be cool to get you back on to talk about it. So I'm going to let Joe actually, if you would like, um, give us a little rundown of what this uh, Dark Tower adventure set is uh, for folks who might not know, and then kind of slide in there maybe what hand you had in it. Cool. Uh, well, I designed the entire thing. I'm going to claim all of Janelle's fantastic work as my own. Um, no, I was, uh, I've been free, I, I freelanced full time as of last summer, I guess. And uh, I was lucky enough to be invited to uh, uh, come on uh, this project by Chris uh, late last year. And uh, how could you not jump at something to work with uh, the, this, this famous uh uh, creation of Janelle's. It's it's a, a, a really amazing uh, module that was built when, uh, what, what was the year that it came out? Was it 79, 80? It was 79. The All of the AD&D core books were not even out yet. And she was using those as 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 the system that she was writing it in. So th just imagine that. Imagine not all, not, imagine not having a player's handbook out uh, you know, or a dungeon master and, while you're writing but, it. But what, what amazes me about about the adventure, the, the, the her original adventure is the um, the depth of it. Because if you compare it with the other AD and D adventures at the time that had been released, uh, I'm I'm thinking what the the giant series Giants. was around that yep. that time. I it's it's a a fraction of the size of Dark Tower, and I mean you had it, comparatively on the the giant series, you had a whole, a few maps and a bunch of really short descriptions of rooms and things and that, that was an awesome adventure and yet you you pull out uh dark tower and it's filled with with uh deep factions and interrelated things that is that's where uh Jacaying the dungeon came hmm. uh, was it turned from this module yes was, exactly yeah where you have multiple different routes and entrances into the different levels so it's not that you walk into level one and go to level two level three level four there's like a way where you can go all the way to the end like right from the beginning and you can get into some some pretty deep deep stuff pretty quickly yeah um, so it just it, if you pull out one of the early ad and d modules 
and you pull out the Dark Tower, you can see why it's ranked as one of the top top modules of all time. It's 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 a, a incredible thing. So uh, last year when when Chris said, "Hey, are, are you interested in uh, writing a little something for this?" Uh, I could not say no. It was, it's uh, <laughs> what a fantastic opportunity. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of kind of how I I came on board and roughly. Uh, I, I think uh, Chris could probably do a better job of explaining how the the three volumes of of their Kickstarter fits together. I was lucky to write uh, an a, an urban based adventure that ties off of the themes from Dark, Dark Tower itself. Um, so I I mean I did a little fraction of this amazing sort of compilation that they got going um but yeah uh, just an awesome awesome project to be part of awesome yeah, yeah awesome so 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 okay so we'll hand it back to chris then if you're the if you're the main of the hour uh talk to us about these three books and what what does that look like and while you're talking about it i'm going to transition the viewers over visually uh to the kickstarter page so they can kind of get a look at some of what you're talking about Excellent. Okay. So yeah, so this is a three volume hardcover in a slipcase. Um, uh, so you got all your three books. Uh, the first volume is a reprint of the original uh, first edition module. Now we've done this before, um, where we always include like an uh, original print. So you can see all the in, in all of its its glory. And it was 72 pages, as, as Joe alluded to, the original G modules, I think, were eight to 12 pages long, maybe 16. Um, and, and Dark Tower was 72 pages, um, which is it was just staggering at, at, at the time. So volume one is a complete reprint of the first edition. And then in, also included in volume one, we do these uh, uh, homage uh, essays, if you will. Um, and we try to reach out to some luminaries in the, in the gaming industry that mm -hmm. can really kind of you know, tell us about their perspectives about um, uh, Dark Tower and, and everything. So we've we've reached out to, we have uh, an essay by um, Eric Mona from um, uh, Paizo, and he yeah. was in charge of Dungeon Magazine at the time when they did the top 30 um, adventure modules of all time, of which Dark Tower, the only non-TSR module to make the list at number 21. So he does an essay. We have uh, John uh, D. Rateliff, who is a Tolkien scholar, um, he does an essay. He's the guy who um, uh, was one, the one who kind of put forth Dark Tower in that that Dungeon Magazine um, uh, Greatest Hits uh, article. He was one of the guys in the room, uh, the champion, the voice, I guess you would say for it. We have an essay from Justin Alexander, who is the, 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 the gentleman who actually coined the term Jacquezing the Dungeon. And he is on his blog post, he has done um thousands of words on this particular module and and comparing it to other modules of the time and everything so he does a great um a great essay and we have others as well uh that's just volume one volume two is and it's in two different versions you can get the dcc version or you can get the um the, the 5e version um so volume two is the original module that 72 page module converted to the game system that you pick out for for your pledge um, and then we've also included, we've expanded the region that it's located in. We've actually fleshed out the wilderness around it. And, uh, and since we actually, we're, this is not a licensed project, we actually own Dark Tower. We actually purchased uh, Dark Tower. Hmm. Um, so uh, we have actually put it into its own region setting. Um, so we have what we call the Janelliverse, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and basically where we can put additional adventures in and around it. And and that's what we did. We were we were going to do these three different diff, uh, three additional adventures, uh, which then became book three. We're like, hey, why not just make this book three and include it in the Kickstarter? And we're like, yeah, we always like bigger and better. We we never shy away from going bigger and better. So um, so we did it. And and Joe happened to write one of those three. He wrote an urban based adventure. So after you finish going through the village of Mitra's Fist, all four dungeon levels, the Dark Tower of Set. And then the um, the White Tower of Mitra. Um, after you get through all of that, then we have additional material <laughs> in the wilderness, and then we have a whole other book of three adventures. One uh, that Joe wrote, the Urban Crawl. We have a wilderness crawl, um, and then we have a, a classic dungeon crawl too. Because Dark Tower is more like your classic dungeon crawl. So for two of the three of those modules, we really wanted to get the get the characters out of the dungeon and get them into mm. some different environments because. They're probably bored with going down corridors and everything. That I don't know. Can you get bored with doing that? <laughs> I mean, really, can you? Um, so that's it. And 
and there's a bunch of exciting extra adventures that we've and, and additional material we've unlocked all nine stretch goals mm. um so uh everything that's on the, the page that uh, actually we unlocked those stretch goals i think almost a week ago um we are we are premiering a, a twitch show on our channel tomorrow night at 8 p.m central to release uh to announce what the next stretch goals are going to be and oh. i'm telling you they're going to be pretty exciting um i'm actually kind of surprised what we're doing so really um, a little bit of teaser there Ooh, all right uh so so let me I, you told me beforehand but that's tomorrow night wednesday night and you said it's at 8 p.m eastern on the yes. goodman games twitch channel yes it's goodman games official is our is our twitch channel so um if you guys check out the kickstarter page there'll be links there and everything too awesome awesome so chris i've got a couple of questions for you based off of what you've said already this evening and and and, and a couple things that i've read online and and so i'm going to kind of take this uh uh this opportunity to quit to to pick your brain a little bit um, okay. And you, you're welcome to tie back in your your experience with Doc, Dark Tower if you want to, um, or or riff on it completely. But one of the things that you said right out the gate that I thought was interesting is you said there's a DCC team or a DCC side of the house at a 5e side of the house, and then mm -hmm. sometimes they come together for a book like this. Can you talk to me a little bit? Talk to us a little bit about the idea of that, and when you have a product like Dark Tower where you're going to have conversions of both, does one team come in and create it, and then the other team kind of takes it afterwards and does the conversion, or is it a collaborative process from the beginning? Okay. Um, so it's it's this is an interesting question because it's it's probably always evolving as we go along. Um, in usually what we do is we go in and we'll do the, the fifth edition conversion first, and then we'll come in and do the DCC conversion after that. Um, we've only done a couple of these. This is only the second one that we've done like this Crypt mm. of the Double Itch, our Kickstarter last year was the first one that we did. Um, so we're learning and, and we're starting to think now that might not be the best way to do things. Really? <laughs> um, so yeah, so now we're actually looking into possibly moving forward of actually just doing them on their own. Um, we do have, for the 5e side, we have a specific design philosophy that's different than the DCC side. Um, when we're dealing with these old classic modules, we, we are really tr treating them like an homage. So, you know, the, the line that I always use is if in room number one, there's 17 orcs and 555 gold pieces in the original, that's what there's going to be in, in, in our version, our 5e version, because we mm. want people that are very familiar with the original to recognize the new one. We know from game designers, modern game design, that 17 orcs is going to overrun a first level party, you know, without a doubt. It's sure. going to overrun a first level party. But that's the way it was written originally. In, in the original <laughs> game, 17 orcs would overrun a, a party of first level characters. You had to learn to run away. You had to learn how to, to get, the, or get the hobgoblins in the next room to, you know, start fighting them from the other side or something. So... So that's the design approach that we really that we've taken in that, and it's it's very important to us. When we first started doing these back uh, four or five years ago, we sat down. I believe it was at GaryCon, and and we actually had a conversation as a team of how are we going to approach these. And you know, we knew what the different avenues were, um, but that's what we that's that that's kind of what we want to do. That's not for everybody. We mm -hmm. we realize that. But we don't want to change the original voice. We want to keep Janelle's original voice. When I was doing uh, converting Gary Gygax's material or or Tom Moldvay, we wanted their voice to be there. If if you remember some of those old encounters from B two, um, Gary put all the all everything you needed was in that paragraph. But it was like kind of a hot mess of the, the treasure was up here and tactics were down there. If you got tactics, the stats were in there somewhere. And oh, and then maybe later on, there'd be some more treasure here. The modern gamer doesn't think along those terms. And so what we do is we, we add the read aloud text if it doesn't have it, because we feel that's kind of essential. And then we reorganize all that material, but we try not to change the voice or change the content. We just kind of reorganize it. And there are times when we do have to actually make some changes in that just for whatever reason. Um, mm. The best part is when we come across a monster or a magic item or a spell that hasn't been uh, converted to fifth edition, and then we get to put our own spin on it and do it. And 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 that part is is a lot of fun because um you know when we're dealing with the the OGL, you know we we can only go from material that's in the um the core books, the core Wizards of the Coast books. So they might have put something out in one of their other. 50 books that they've put out, but we're not allowed to use that. Right. So like, you know, even if that monster 
appeared uh, over, you know, I'm looking at you, giant crayfish, even if it appeared in a different <laughs> book, we can't necessarily use it unless it's a, a, a wizard's licensed book. So um, it's a little bit tricky at times, but um, but th that that's the fun part. And that's where the authors love doing those kind of things. So interesting and then so you said that you're rethinking some of the design philosophies or some of that some of the process there so it leads me to believe that maybe when it comes to dcc and i know that's not your side of the house but that there's maybe a different way that you guys might approach a conversion when it comes to dcc is that correct yeah so so dcc's it's a very different rule set um especially when it when it comes to magic um magic is is the is the quote unquote wild card where you can do some spectacular things at first level or it can go devastatingly wrong on you um so so and it requires a completely different kind of design philosophy when we were doing to the devil itch we we discovered that early on that um yeah there's there's a lot of changes that different and it, it doesn't the translations don't exactly you know work that way so um so we're 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 learning as we go along we're like you know it might be better to to, to really start these at the same time and kind of branch them off at the beginning instead mm -hmm. of doing one first and then do the other one um but you know we'll be honest with you you know once we do that we're going to then reevaluate things and we say, did that work? Did it mm -hmm. not work? You know, what, what worked for everybody? You know, we're, we're still a small team, um, you know, and, uh, and, and we're always looking at ways to do things differently and, and more efficiently. So that's just part of it. Um, my counterpart that joined uh, Goodman Games that's working on the DCC side, um, he joined us six, eight months ago, I would say. So, so, you know, when we were doing originally Crypto Devil Itch and when I was doing most of the design work on Dark Tower, we didn't even really have a whole official side of uh, the DCC set set up mm -hmm. yet. So so he's kind of um, and that's uh, that's Michael Curtis. Most of the folks who are familiar with DCC know, know Michael Curtis very well. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one who manages our DCC side. So he kind of inherited these last two projects. So this next one is, you know, after this one is going to be the first one that he's going to be around for. So things will probably be different so, <laughs> for awesome. the better. There you go. Fingers crossed. Awesome. Awesome. Troy, before I, before I tackle some more questions, do you have anything you wanted to ask or throw in? Uh, I would like, I, I was just looking through uh, the, the Kickstarter here and checking things out. Um, and I kind of think I forgot what I was going to ask. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Because <laughs> now I, I move my cursor. And I don't. I don't remember what I was looking at to go. Oh, I need to ask about this. Um, Travis, I, or I, I was supposed to lower the bar, Troy. I, and... I well, <laughs> I told you. I told you that was my job. Um, but Joe, you said you said that you wrote a, a an urban encounter adventure. Yes, I so was. When 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 I got handed the assignment, because uh, Chris actually had ideas of doing three different types of adventures, and and I was the the last man on the totem pole, so I said oh, I'll take I'll take whatever I get. I'm quite happy. And then then it was urban adventure, and I I don't know if the the look of fear was in my eyes when we were talking on the call, it was. Chris. It was. <laughs> Because I uh, I find uh, urban adventures real a real challenge to put together. They um, are because when I think of a city, it's it's a big open space where you can go anywhere. So how do you how do you write an adventure that makes players feel like they can go everywhere, but yet rein it in so that they end up going to the places that you want to go? So I I uh, the the first two weeks of of me looking at this was me panicking in a corner kind of shaking uh trying to figure out how i do it and uh, hopefully it, it comes out okay and and wasn't too railroady i don't i, don't, I think it i think it was all right but uh yeah, it was, yeah, it was... I'll, I'll i'll tell you <laughs> he's being very modest it, it came out great i mean I'll, I'll be honest with you joe knocked it out of the park it, it was okay. the hardest of the three that i assigned and 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 for all the reasons joe just mentioned i mean when you're in a city you you don't have that ten foot corridor to 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 railroad even though you're not railroading the PCs, um and and you know Joe and I had a couple of really good um uh, email exchanges early on um, where he's like am I going down the right direction is it, you know is this this what you're thinking and and I was like yeah exactly you do not design the entire city give us a flavor of the city give us something you know a few things about the city give us a few areas that that you know that you think they will go in. 
Um, you know, Joe said, oh, it's scary to write a, an urban adventure. It's even more <laughs> scary to run it as a game master. Yes. Because if yes. the players are like, I want to go to the market, even though the market's <laughs> not designed, like they're going to the market and, yeah. you know, you're going to be kind of stuck there. So, um, so yeah, so it was, it was definitely a challenge. But like I said, after, after all the dungeons that they crawl through in the original Dark Tower, I wanted to mix it up. I, I didn't want three dungeons to um uh three more dungeons for them to crawl through because people would be like, oh, geez, more dungeons, more statues, more this, more, you know. Mm. It's like so we got them out and about moving around the region a bit and and you know, exploring and and really kind of tapping the uh well, the potential that we that we have with this setting. Right on. Yeah, one of and, one of the things I, I, I enjoyed with it. Sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah, interrupt you, no. Troy. Um was uh I got to dive into some of Goodman Games sort of back stuff to to pull out some ideas to to throw into the adventure. So actually, out of mine, there's sort of hints to go dig out an old. Uh, uh, is it called Fifth Edition Fantasy? Is that the name? Or yeah, what's, Fifth Edition Fantasy. Yeah, yep. an old, one of their their old ones because it, it's a, a perfect tie-in for for a, a follow-up to the the adventure I wrote. But, well, that's uh, cool because because in the descriptions it says that uh, each of these three adventures are pulling from uh, one of the villainous chosen sons of Set. Now, I'm not asking for spoilers or inside <laughs> information, but Joe, what did you land on with your chosen son of Set that really said, "Oh, this is the thing. This is going to be the flavor. This is going to be what." bites the pcs in the okay. butt well just for everybody watching out there be very quiet don't share this with anybody uh the, the one i the one i made uh was evil uh was the kind of the, the thing. <laughs> no uh <laughs> no i there goes I, that bar there goes that I, bar actually again. i think uh recently chris in one of your updates you, you actually gave out the the formula that uh yep. you provided for building the the sons of set um so i one of the things I, I did for for my adventure is there's actually three big bad evil guys in the in the mm. core but uh i'm uh very thrilled that the one of the ones that i that i designed is is actually on one of the, the covers the the illustrations Ooh. uh and there's a, a little uh Chris just shared with me today. I'm a little giggly inside. Um, <laughs> there's a they they made a mini of the the big bad evil guy that I came up with. I don't know, it, Chris. Can you float through the uh, oh, uh, a link to these guys? I, I, I just got it up for him. Yeah, you they're looking it up, at it right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That literally. So if you check out the update today, I I didn't even Joe. I didn't even know about this. I I knew about <laughs> other minis that we were having possibly oh. done and everything, but I just got this um today and saw it and i said oh this is this is great so yeah that's actually that's that's actually a mini of his of his um of his big bad uh that's that will be cool. available um during the kickstarter uh which is just exciting so she's not really that bad i mean she has a sort of a head covered with snakes and a gigantic snake body and a bunch of arms but aside from that she's normal uh, <laughs> she's a nice girl yes so, so for, in case folks don't know, so the sons of Set are so Set's the evil snake deity, um, and and the sons of Set are basically there are a series. Janelle created a series of random tables so that you can um, determine what they look like, and then all of their abilities. And literally, it's like roll on the roll a die twenty on this table, then roll a die six on this table, and then roll it, and it'll give you like what its appearance is, and then. All of its other attacks and it's you know might have six arms and if it has six arms and it gets you know four additional attacks and all this kind of stuff so and and you literally literally the sons of set are just you can have all different types out there and there's there's lesser sons and chosen sons and um and that was the funnest part of it we were we were figuring it out there's there's only four chosen sons at, at any one time and one of them is in the original Dark Tower module, and and not a spoiler alert, but we did three additional modules, <laughs> so you guys can probably mm. figure out what the theme is on those other three modules. So, um, and and that was a lot of fun, and we presented that to to Janelle last year, and we were like, hey, here's what we're thinking about doing, 
And she was like, that's amazing. She's like, I was like, she's like, why didn't I ever think of that? It's like, <laughs> well, you know, just took 40 years, you know? <laughs> Awesome. Well, okay. So Chris, the last thing that I had for you, um, and this actually came from a a blog entry that I read on Goodman's uh, website about you last year. Um, But you talked about when you were, uh, uh, you or your writers were were writing content in the 5e uh, space. You say, sometimes you bring in freelancers who have experience, sometimes they don't have a lot of experience, but anyone that comes in is going to learn designing the Goodman Games way. Um, and, and the article, at least, proposes that, I think, uh, some, it, it, it implicates that as something of a philosophy. Is there something there that, that you wouldn't mind sharing with us as far as what that might mean? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's that old school voice. Um, you know, we really, um, obviously, we've done hundreds of adventures uh, as Goodman games in in a variety of systems back to the third edition days 3.5 fourth edition um now fifth edition our dcc rpg we've done some lovecraft modules um you know with call of cthulhu Mm -hmm. so uh we've we've pride ourselves on we think we know a little bit about after you publish about you know a couple hundred 200 modules we pretty sure we kind of have a pretty good feel of it and and really it's it's that old school feel it's that you know, yeah, NPCs are there, but, you know, get them to the action, you know, start them right at the dungeon. Don't, don't do this long winded thing where it's going to take three sessions before they even get through the first (laughs) encounter. It's like, no, get them started like right away. Um, interesting locations, um, interesting, um, encounters, boss fights, interesting environments, all those things are what we're looking for. And like I said, I, I try to give some direction to the writers when I approached the three writers for the Sons of the Set trilogy. I was like, I want one dungeon type adventure, one urban type adventure, and one wilderness type adventure. And it's like, you know, and I, I had some other little pointers here and there. But after that, you know, I mean, Joe could have come back and said, well, my city's got 200 people in it, or it's got 20,000. Like, I would have been like, all right, I'll go with either or. That's fine. I just I just didn't want it underground <laughs> right. the whole time, you know, and it's like, you know, and, and, and do stuff like that. Same with like the wilderness crawl and that. So, so yeah, it's, we really look for people that have, we call it the old school voice kind of mm. thing, um, because that what kind of fits in. Um, what, what we're looking for, both on our 5e side and also um, on our DC side. And if you play some of our new 5th edition fantasy modules, you'll be like, yeah, this is like something I probably would have played back in the 80s. You know, very, very similar, very reminiscent. And um, yeah, people seem to like it. So we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> right on. Very right cool. on. Okay. Well, as we're getting down to the end of the uh, stream here, uh, Chris, this is where I'm going to give you an opportunity to point people towards different links. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, of course, that the Kickstarter is Original Adventures Reincarnated Number 7, The Dark Tower. Um, And you can find that by uh, clicking on the link in the show notes if you're listening to this uh, on YouTube or on a podcast. Uh, But what are some other places that they can go if they want to check out Goodman Game stuff? Yeah, so obviously we've got our our regular website is probably uh, the best place to get information. We update it uh, with two blog posts a day. Um, And then we are always constantly uh, putting out like a newsletter. um, And and that's where you're going to find out well in advance before like our Kickstarters drop. We announce everything there. Um, So definitely check that out. Uh, We have an official Twitch channel. It's Goodman Games Official, um, all one word, on uh, twitch.tv. Uh, we have uh, live playthroughs, mostly of our DCC games, but we do have a couple of shows. I host one show that's every third uh, Sunday called Talking TSR, uh, where uh, uh, myself and a co-host, we grab one of the old uh, TSR modules from the 70s or the 80s, and then we spend a whole hour just talking about it. And that, that show is like, imagine if you were at Gen Con and it's the end of the day and you're at the Hyatt bar and uh you know you're talking about how your day went it's just two old guys shooting the breeze um about you know one of the classic modules that was in the day that we all remember those encounters um and then also i do a show um called coming down the 5e pike uh that's going to be every other month coming up soon uh starting soon uh we did one a couple of weeks ago you can check that out on our twitch channel Uh, we also post them on youtube Uh, we do have a goodman games youtube channel uh, so things after we do our live streams, well, everything gets up on there. Um, and then another, uh, uh, another plug I'd like to say is, uh, 20 sides to every story. They have their own, um, Twitch channel as well. Uh, they do live, uh, playthroughs mostly. 
um, and they are doing a couple of um, DCC N5E Dark Tower uh, playthroughs during the campaign. So I think the first one's coming up, I think, this weekend. Uh, so if you go to the Kickstarter page, you'll see links for those as well there. Plus, there's a couple of old videos that we've done uh, interviewing Janelle um, and, and talking about uh, Dark Tower in general, if you guys want more information. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, Joe, I'll give you an opportunity here. I know you got some stuff in the works outside of Goodman, uh, so I'll give you an opportunity since you're popping on. What, where can folks find you if they want to know more about what Joe's got cooking? Uh, well, you can usually follow me um, on Twitter. Uh, my handle's at underscore Joe underscore Rosso. Uh, back in March, however, uh, shortly after working with uh, Chris's fantastic Kickstarter, I joined Ghostfire Games. Uh, so I'm now the writing coordinator uh, for the Fables line. It's a um, monthly subscription service where uh, subscribers get uh, at the start of every month, uh, imagine that monthly at the start of every month, uh, you get a, uh, an adventure um, with all the goodies that you need, the, the tokens, the, the handouts, uh, whatever you might want. Uh, right now it's just uh, PDF versions, uh, but um, it, each adventure forms uh, a total six month integrated story. Um, and so they released their first fable uh, in January. So we're now approaching the end of the first campaign, uh, shepherded by Joey Hayek. Uh, James Joy Hay, uh, nice. done a fantastic job. Uh, so I, I came on board in in uh, end of March, and I'm sort of shepherding the shepherding, getting the last little bits done for the next campaign, which uh, Joy handed off to me. Um, that will start off in um, July, and I believe next month we'll we'll start um, uh, releasing some some teasers on it, but. Uh, it, it might have something to do with the astral plane. Ooh. It's uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, but uh, it would be remiss for me not to mention that. Um, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, I was awfully excited two weeks ago when, when the, the Dark Tower kick, Kickstarter appeared because at the same time, a second Kickstarter for my, my uh, Ghostfire company came out the exact same day yes. uh, and something like so i had two big <laughs> projects go to kickstarter that i had a little hand in uh so I've, i'm a little bit uh, uh i don't know bounce bounce in my step in the last couple of weeks anyways um, so uh ghost fire has uh if uh, folks are interested uh aurora a-r-o-r-a -A, a kickstarter it's uh doing reasonably well uh, also uh it's a campaign setting um uh, and a bunch of adventures in it that uh, is, I guess, almost post-apocalyptical. Did I pronounce mm. that right? Um, where uh, dragons are maybe not quite uh, the way they should be anymore. Uh, so it's a, a pretty cool sec uh, setting. I, I recommend folks uh, take a look. Awesome. Uh, otherwise, uh, check me out on Twitter. Perfect. Right on. Awesome. Right on. All right. Before we go, we have a question from the uh, the chat. Don't. Ooh. Yeah. From ah, Ulysses. is that Ulysses? Yes. Uh, he wants to know, since you guys are the masters, the experts <laughs> of bringing the uh, 70s and 80s adventures to uh, current editions, what are the most unique qualities about the past that you feel is missing in today's adventures and also the inverse? What do you think is defining about the adventures of today that were missing back in the old days? Um, I think it's probably exploration. I mean, there's people always joke about back in those old first edition games, you always had that 10 foot pole with you because it was so useful. You could use it for so many different things. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's pretty clear that in 5e that exploration is probably the weakest of the three tiers. Um, and, and I know when we actually strive to put our module together, we try to make exploration pretty important, try to hide little things here. Um, e even Easter eggs that might not be important to the plot of the module. I love putting Easter eggs in being a, a child of the seventies and the eighties. I love, love putting in like, uh, you know, pop culture movie stuff and stuff like that. I hide little things in there. It's like, yep. Or if you look at that artwork, I'll describe it. Like I had a, 
I had a hill giant and I fashioned him off of uh, Andre the Giant from, uh, you know, Prince's Bride. And I'm like, I had yeah. him do the stance and everything. I had the artist do the, <laughs> the stance with the, like that and everything. And it was like, it was just fun. It was just fun to kind of put that little nod in there. It was like, it's just a hill giant. That's it. But like, if you're, if you, if you remember Prince's Bride and you remember Fezzik, you're kind of like, oh, hey, wait a minute. It's like, look at that. And it's like the little cool things that the players might not ever see um you know but I like it's, that's just the fun side of being an author doing that but but i would say exploration is probably the the biggest thing and you know okay. and there's probably not enough of that in the, the modern game or they don't they don't think instantly to that so many times there's like so many cool clues the clues are right there they're in the room <laughs> and they just like you know the fight's over let's go out that door you know <laughs> awesome Awesome. Joe, do you want to take the inverse of that? What do you think uh what do you think modern adventures have that maybe was missing from the older stuff? Um I, I think uh might have been the last time I was here somebody asked me what my favorite old uh, adventure was. Um and it it for me it was uh Sinister Secrets of Salt Marsh because for me at the time that was very different than a lot of the other modules that were typically being uh, made in that there was a, a, a full integrated backstory that to my adolescent brain actually made sense. Like it wasn't just a whole <laughs> bunch of carved tunnels and, and giant rooms. It was, And I think that's that's something that's been adopted with modern um, dungeon design where there's, there's a, a, a full story, a cohesive uh, bits all stuck together. It's not just, oh, we put a cockatrice in the, in the room next door because well, I had a room and I, I like the monster. No, the monsters in, in modern design, I think there's a little more thought put to, well, why is that thing there? Why is this, um, what's the motivations of folks where, you know, in the old school dungeons, motivations were maybe not as as key to to having a fun adventure kind of go through. So in my mind, anyways, that's, that's how I, I see a bit of a difference. Perfect. I, I agree 100%. Yeah, dungeon ecology. There you go. Dungeon ecology, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Chris and Joe uh, and Troy for hanging out with me and uh, uh, participating. Thank you, Chat, for uh, for being lively this evening. And uh, yeah, I'm going to encourage everybody to go check out Goodman Games on Kickstarter. Uh, that's where I'm headed next. And until next week, we'll see you next time. Play great games, everybody. Great. Thanks, everybody.